hoagies and grinders, and welcome to this episode of Grindcast, the official podcast of GrindAward.com. I'm Matt, and we got... Will. And Jason. Jason's sleeping on the table. I'm real mad. Why are you mad? You Why are you mad with like your, your pot pie <laughs> jaw jutting out? You willing to steal your milkshake? You're like, a real asshole. I'm real mad. <laughs> you need a corn cob pipe? I mean, if you got one. Don't. I should. You probably should. I don't know why you don't. I mean, what house? <laughs> a house is not a home without a corn cob pipe. That's Will's what, got one. That's what, I do. That's what Frosty told me. I saw him do drugs out of it once. <laughs> All the drugs? Well. <laughs> nah, he was, we just pissed on a Coke machine that night, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah. It's fire department. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it all makes sense, actually. Mm-mm. You guys are the worst. Mm. That noise was delicious. We're sitting peach here milkshake. sipping our uh, Chick-fil-A peach milkshakes here. Yeah. Don't say we. Jason's not. Well, he... you finished yours on the car ride. Yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> what do you want me to do? A 10-minute car drinking. ride, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Mention the size. <laughs> <laughs> It's a large milkshake. Because you was, go big or you go home. Exactly. It was, it was girthy as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mention the size. Mention the size. It was bigger <sighs> than I expected. <laughs> it was so much cream. <laughs> it was all frothy. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> so now that the laughs are out of the way, we have some sad news. We do. Very we do. sad news. Just today, two. One icon. <laughs> and, and you, you, can't, you can't say today, remember. We're in the past. Today is in today, but this is going to be Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Time traveling again. Time travels. Gigawatts. But we just so, learned that... Yeah. Oh, what is today's date? The, the 11th. This would have been the 11th. The world's hero, Christopher Lee. Christopher Lee died. At 156. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. He died at 96. If he was 156 and looked like that and acted like that, then maybe we should all just do what Christopher Lee was doing. I Make Christmas metal albums. I don't know if I'll live to 96, but if I do, I want to be like Christopher Lee at 96. That man stayed active. Up he until lived. The day he yeah, he did. He did. How many 96 year olds released metal albums? Exactly. Not many. <laughs> You are all about this. <laughs> I really am, because it's so fucking cool. Plug it one more time. Get your royalties in there. Christopher Lee does a Christmas metal album. If you haven't listened to it, look it up, listen yeah. to it. It's fantastic. He doesn't sing. He just talks like Sauron through the whole thing. But it works. It sings. works. It works. You know, and the it sounds like is, Rammstein. It's like, when I, when I first heard this... And it's Saruman. Not about the metal yeah, album. Whoever. But, it's not whoever. But then he had passed. It actually did bum me out. And I know, like you were saying earlier, it's not like... You know, I went and had tea with him on he's Tuesdays like, or he's something. Like to come to your house for yeah, the party. But now he definitely like, won't. I, I'm just like, when we were talking about that, like, I, I don't mean to sound insensitive because it's terrible when somebody dies. But when I go on Facebook or something and I see like... And people are like, I'm deeply touched by this. Yeah. Like, my entire day is ruined. I'm crying for hours. I'm so deeply wounded by this. It's just like, I, he didn't know you. <laughs> like, no, no, he like, didn't. I, I don't know. Like, yes, it's sad. And he doesn't know it. But he, he affected my life. I mean, he was one of the reasons that I got so heavily into He affected armies. mine, too. Yeah. I didn't want to turn the lights off when I was a kid to go to bed. <laughs> Chris really actually ruined my childhood. <laughs> I never slept. He really thought that he was a vampire. You yeah. Know, and, and the thing is... You see those bloodshot eyes when he was playing Dracula? That looked, that looked real. He, they were his actual He eyes. was the best Dracula of all time, and I know I'm going to catch some heat for that. What about Coolio? From who? From... <laughs> From Dracula enthusiasts, I don't know, but <laughs> who, like, who, 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 Dracula. Like, <laughs> so you're, you're thinking people are gonna be like, "How dare you swear against Bela Lugosi?" Because <laughs> well, he was buried in his cape. Christopher Lee's not gonna be buried in his cape. You don't know. He's gonna be it's buried. Like, in they're gonna his bury Saruman him. Outfit. They're yeah. gonna bury him with in a the suit cape. made from all his different costumes. I hope so. <laughs> you know how fucking awesome that would be. That would be great. If I was in this exactly, right, that would be the first thing in my will. Yeah, stitch together all my outfits. Put me in it. Put me in the ground. Yeah, I don't think it's even close though. I don't. I mean, I know that everybody thinks of like 
whether they know it or not, the stereotypical Dracula is Bela Lugosi. Yeah, with, the, like with Bela Lugosi. The, the Romanian accent and the slicked hair the and children the children, yeah, the, the cape and the you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink wine, kind of. <laughs> yeah, you know. I don't drink wine. <laughs> <laughs> I still think the best Dracula was Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, how can you not appreciate the Coolio Dracula? Yeah. <laughs> There's a million ways you can not appreciate yeah. the Coolio Dracula. But, but other guys that played Dracula that weren't even close, uh, Frank Langella. Uh, yeah. He did yeah. in the 70s. Uh, Gary, Old, that, Gary Oldman. Whoever that guy was in that... Uh, <laughs> Gary Oldman's a good actor, though. But he was, oh, a, up. He was a terrible Dracula. Jesus but I don't Christ, think that was all his talk. fault, though. Blowing up, sorry. Stop, turn off your Kodak. Yeah, you're, professional. you're besmirching the memory of Christopher Lee right you now. You really are. So so I wanted to pay a little homage to Christopher Lee and list off my top five favorite Christopher Lee films. Okay. That way, if you know people want to watch I'll, something other than the Star Wars movies or Lord of the Rings to celebrate his life. If you want to blast from the past excellent. as well. Uh, I will agree or disagree ahead. with this, top five. Okay. Because I am uh, Huge Christopher Lee enthusiast. <laughs> the uh, first one for me is uh, from 1966, Dracula, Prince of Darkness. Wrong. Which Bam. It's wrong. Howling <laughs> Tool. <laughs> Howling Tool was one of his greatest horror works. <laughs> Somehow ever. that's not on my list. I it don't isn't. know why it's it not on my be. list. He was, it was fantastic. Uh, the first DVD I ever bought yeah. was Hound of the Baskervilles. Mm-hmm. Christopher Lee with Peter Cushing. I'm going to also have to disagree. Uh, I'm going to go with the uh, Captain America that uh, Red Brown starred in. He was the villain in that as well. He's getting... He might be getting there. He better. Oh, that's also not on my list. Really? But you're allowed to contribute to Worst this. Worst top five list. Everybody berate Will in the comments. Yeah, everybody <laughs> just Worst just top five rip, list ever. Rip apart my top five. Uh, rip him apart. Uh, right. Uh, the Devil Rides Out. Terrible. Jesus <laughs> Do you not like anything? Uh, Blood for Dracula or Dracula's sex doll. That was one of them, wasn't it? Blood for Dracula's Blood flashlight. For Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> but that was that was Udo Kier. That was Udo Kier. It's Udo Kier, yeah, the other greatest Dracula. Yeah. Ever. <laughs> um, to the Devil a Daughter. That one was actually really good. Uh, with I like Richard that one. Widmark. That's a pretty good one. He plays like a satanic priest, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Curse of Frankenstein, the uh, the Frankenstein reboot that Hammer did in '58. That's strange to me that none of the actual beginning or direct Dracula movies were in your list. Well, uh, Dracula: Prince of Darkness was the second Dracula movie he did. I put that above Horror of Dracula. Ah, I see. Um, but there were some that I kept off the list, and one of them was the one that Jason just mentioned, and that was The, the Wicker, Wicker Man. Man. <sighs> Great movie. The one with Christopher Lee. And no, no, both of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. oh my god. Matt, I need you to do it again. Oh. The, the, when they're leading that guy up to the wicker bed. <laughs> the British cop guy. You gotta do when he's freaking out being dragged up to the wicker bed. Oh, he's like, oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh Lord in heaven, save me! <laughs> We gotta, I clip we gotta the burn you that way we have a better harvest next year. I clipped the shit out of that audio right there. So Look Christ, at all that red. Dude. It's like a McDonald's flag right there. You won't hear that though because I'm master of audio editing. No, he made a, he made a lot of terrible stuff too, but that's not his fault. Yeah, you know he's been a lot in 282 of films. Bash when people are in bad movies because it's their fault. He was just a great actor who got stuck with a bad script. Yeah. My favorite Christopher Lee movie was the, uh, it was in the special features of a movie where he talked about how great he was <laughs> <laughs> for two hours while he was just like, his body superimposed in space <laughs> yeah. and he's just reading out of a book. What? Yeah, it was so weird. I and actually, it was literally like two hours long. I actually really enjoy watching the documentaries where Christopher Lee just talks about himself and Peter Cushing for like three hours. Oh, it's like all monotone. I just put it on in the background like while I'm baking cookies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you could go about your entire day's work and just be like, me and Peter once went to a Chick-fil-A and got peach milk. <laughs> <laughs> But he, he was also in a Bond movie. Yeah. The Man with the Golden Yeah, he, he played uh, he played Jaws, right? 
Jesus <laughs> Christ, Matt. Kill yourself. <laughs> that, was, that was Richard Keel. <laughs> well, you can get them mixed up. They look the same. Oh, yeah, they're exactly the same. <laughs> they're both kind of tall, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and then, like, everybody knows him as, as Saruman. Yeah. And, or Sauron. Uh, or, or, yeah, count, Shut up. Count, it's Saruman. Okay? Count, uh, the White Wizard. Dooku. Dooshku. Yeah. I don't care about those movies, um, though. But he was also... The, the, the episodes one through He's three. also very underrated as the dentist in uh, Willy, uh, <laughs> Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Or, oh, I it? forgot about that. Yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Willy Factory. Willy Wonka, yeah. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Is the movie. Was that the movie? Was it Charlie and the Chocolate yes. Factory? I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yep. All right, well, he was the dentist <laughs> in that. He was Willy Wonka's father. And he played the dentist. He played two characters. He's actually been in a movie every Yeah, that's what year. I mean. Willy Wonka's father was a dentist. Oh, he was a dentist. Yeah. Okay. Wow, I paid a lot of attention to that movie. Yeah, that's why he didn't like what his son was doing, because his son was mm, making candy, which is bad right. for your teeth. Yeah, he's been in a movie every single year since 1946. Yeah. Yeah. Every he single did, year. Up he until did a lot of... Where did you get that? He did a lot of stuff uh, before he did horror movies. Like, he did a lot of action stuff. Like he was in like I cannot picture that. He was that in, in a mind. pirate movie. Okay, I can picture that. <laughs> <laughs> and he was in a few detective movies and uh he just like, Yo ho me swamp. <laughs> captain Horatio Hornblower R N. He played Spanish Captain. Hmm. He did some uh Hornblower registered nurse? What? He did some uh, <laughs> Italian movies too, like for Jess Franco in the seventies, but uh, okay. he's mostly known for his stuff with Hammer and then the stuff most recently yeah but yeah I mean, his stuff that he did in Hammer I think was way better than anything he's done recently I mean like I know more recently was his bigger roles I guess but like I can not like him as Saruman he does an amazing job can I finish <laughs> no you can't you have to explain what I was going to finish with was going to explain why I said what I said look at me I don't <laughs> uh, finish your thought God I just love dead awkward hair Because somebody's <laughs> being an ass That's what I bring to the table I, I know I love it every week I'm like what's Jason going to do to ruin my day yeah. I don't even know what it was now <laughs> Yes I totally lost the stuff it stuff when he did with Hammer yeah. was... he, You could tell back when he was doing that That he really enjoyed what he was doing he was into every role they threw at him. And, you know, like, I love him now, like, when he did Sorum Mon. Jeez, some grapes. And then when he, you know, like, eh, Count, whatever. It's, yeah. It's, like I said, this is one scene not good. No one was yeah. good in those movies. It well, was no. kind yeah. of, it was the throwaway role, but seeing him do it was still pretty cool. Yeah. But back when he was doing the Dracula movies and when he played other bit parts and stuff, and there was just. He, he, you could tell he really loved what he was doing then, mm-hmm. and that to me, like I got more enjoyment out of watching those Hammer films than him doing what he did more recently. Yeah, the one one Hammer film we didn't mention that he was in was the Mummy. Yeah, and that was a good no no speaking lines really, but he was pretty intimidating as the Mummy. Yeah, a lot more intimidating than Karloff was. But... Well, he's gone now. Yeah. And but if you've never seen any of his yeah. movies from, like, uh, Hammer, definitely look them up. I'm sure you can probably, some of them are probably on Netflix and stuff. And I guarantee maybe. you can get them off Netflix. Amazon Prime. I mean, there's torrents yeah. out there, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's ways, because a lot of the Just, DVDs, unfortunately, are really expensive. I'm sure, Ian, uh, let's say Ian McKellen, he's going to die soon, too, which would be really sad. Predicting deaths. Uh, a new he, segment on uh, Grindcast. I'm, I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> how life goes. I can't stop time from marching <laughs> forward. People die. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just reminded of that fucking sec- commercial from Oxygen Hunger Force. God damn it. <laughs> anyway, Christopher Lee. I forgot what I was gonna say. Fuck. I, I'm, I'm, fuck. Fuck. Well, this is just a fantastic <laughs> episode so far. <laughs> Christopher Lee, lots of swearing. Um, no, it's just it's it's sad. Um, him and Peter Cushing are always going to remember for their their horror movie stuff. But they were great actors. It doesn't. You know, everybody says horror movies. Oh, it's always terrible acting and shit like that. But like I said, it's 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 terrible scripts, not terrible acting. Yeah, <laughs> very true. Like I said, Howling Two was great <laughs> because of him. 
He fucking throws a holy hand grenade at a werewolf and blows I actually it up. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's fucking great. He just like says something like gibberish, obviously, <laughs> because like nobody wrote it in any different language. Yeah. And he just like throws it in. This werewolf's just like, boom! <laughs> just blows up. It was an actual incantation. Yeah. That was not supposed to happen, but it did. He threw a pokeball in there. How <laughs> <laughs> to catch them all? <laughs> yes. Okay, Master Christopher Lee. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, so, and I guess to round out more saddening news, yep. Will, you start with this one. You knew about this guy a lot. Yeah, today I learned that the uh, son of a plumber, the American dream Dusty Rhodes, passed away. I was actually kind of surprised he was only 69. <laughs> considering yeah, I thought he, he was, looked really rough the last couple years. I thought he was a lot older uh, than that. Dusty Rhodes was in, heavily involved in wrestling um, starting in the 1960s up until still working uh, in the creative department at WWE up until this very day. So that's a long time to be yeah. involved. And he did everything from booking the stuff to writing to wrestling to, you know, he's got two sons that wrestle. Um, and he was probably the first really great promo guy. Like, there is a promo that he cut in 1985 on Ric Flair. Uh, you can look <laughs> it up on YouTube. It was the Hard Times promo. Yeah. Where he comes out and he's like, he's like, Ric Flair. I love you, Dusty Rhodes. American Ro Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Your Dusty Rhodes is my mic <laughs> <laughs> You sent me home, you, you with the, the welfare of my family. And you know what, you know what, Ric Flair, you know what hard times is? Hard times is when you work for a company for 30 years. And they give you a gold watch and kick you in the butt and they say, Hey man, a computer just took your job, brother. <laughs> <laughs> that is hard times. Because the American Dream Dusty Rhodes is here for the people. <laughs> Why am I so erect right now? <laughs> I, I could not answer that question. But, uh, I, I'm inflated. Uh, you know, Dusty Rhodes, you know, was just big, fat, white guy. But he had so much soul. He and had a hell of a barbecue sauce, and too. That was Jim Ross. But <laughs> Oh! Uh, they both look the same. <laughs> Damn it. But Dusty Rhodes, like... That's backfired. Had some great, 10. great ideas uh, through the years of wrestling. Some terrible ideas, but the thing is, is that he really wrestling wouldn't be what it was today without him. Um, and I know there's a lot of people out there that grew up in the '80s watching wrestling and stuff like that, so they remember him. And and uh, his sons, uh, Cody and Dustin, are still wrestling. And uh, so at least uh, the Rhodes family will live on in wrestling. So yeah, I mean it's it's sad, but you know and they're they're. Gold dust and stardust? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And like I was talking to my dad about this earlier, we almost wish that they would just drop those gimmicks and just wrestle. Just, yeah, as, just wrestle. As Cody Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes and yeah, just. Yeah, like uh, let honor his memory. Yeah. Now. Just let yeah. them be, uh, not it's, like they're on yeah. stage personas. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, it was a rough day. Christopher Lee and Dusty Rhodes both yeah. passed it away. Two guys that in different yeah. ways affected my life. You know, mm -hmm. It sounds weird to say, but here I go again. What about the rule of three? Who's yeah. gonna be the third one? Yeah. Ian McKellen, we're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would be truly sorry if that happened. There's a lot of stuff we've proclaimed on this uh, podcast gotta, that has come true. I really update. don't. Ian oh McClellan God! Passed away. At Shut up. <laughs> no. He passed away at 7:49 p.m. on 6:11, 2015. Don't, don't do this. Don't I'm do. not the one that did it. You said it. Now Gandalf's gone. That's all he does. And Magneto. Jesus Christ. But I will yeah. say, what, what wrestling Damn. can do to somebody's body driving, riding up and down those roads, Christopher Lee looked healthier at age 96 than Dusty Rhodes did <laughs> at age 69. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Well, so that's it for the deaths today. Yeah. We'll move on to one more news topic here, and then we'll get into our request topic. So uh, let me see. Which one do I want to pick here? I want to talk about Chris Hemsworth. Being the receptionist in the all female Ghostbusters movie. You gotta get some eye candy in there for the ladies. I'm like, so, I just think it's like, so they're kind of like turning this into magic. <laughs> well, you know, I like how he's just sitting there with like a shirt off. He's just like humping the desk as they're walking in. But he's not a comedic actor though either. My wife had a really interesting take on this where she said, it's like bizarro Ghostbusters because <laughs> the females are yeah. the Ghostbuster characters, and Janine, the you know, 
she was like a nerdy, like li- like sexy librarian thing look going on there, right. and, you know. And Chris Hemsworth is this big buff guy, and he's going to be your secretary. So it's kind of it's kind of could be funny. Uh, and maybe. what do you mean he's not a comedic actor? He's, he's playing in the new Vacation movie. Is he? Yeah. What's he going to oh, be yeah, he in, is that? in that? I can't remember the role, but in the trailer, he, they like visit him. Because Ed Helms is playing the uh, Chevy Chase character. Yeah, that's yep. just fantastic, by the yeah. way. Yeah, really. He's, he's great. <laughs> no, but like I could see it actually working. I don't know, Fred is going to probably stone me uh, by saying that, but I think that this addition to the movie actually might make it funnier. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want... Like, because I was so blown away by Spy, mm-hmm. that movie, and it's going to be written by the same per Like, this new Ghostbusters movie is going to be written by the same person. Paul Feig. Yeah. Like, when I went in to see Spy, I was expecting almost like... Oh, like, uh, what was that movie we saw the one week? It was that other... Uh, Hot Pursuit. Hot Pursuit. I was expecting something almost like Hot Pursuit. Like, jokes aren't really funny... I could give two shits about the people that are acting in it. You know? Yeah. And by the time that movie was over, like, the time by the time Spy was over, I was like, this, movie's, this movie made me laugh a ton. And I was completely surprised by that. So I'm hoping that that's good signs for what might be happening with this new Ghostbusters movie. Because we waited, uh, what, how many years? <laughs> how many years since two? Two was was that ninety one? I think so. Yeah, I believe so. So, I think we're we're owed a good uh, Ghostbusters movie here. <laughs> I kind of agree with what Fred has said in the past that it almost feels like it shouldn't be done as like a reboot. It shouldn't be done as like paying homage. It should be its own separate thing because yes, Harold Ramis is dead, but you know what? Hollywood just bastard <laughs> bastardizes franchises anyway. Yeah. It might still be funny, uh, so you know I'll give it a shot. Yeah, very well. Could I'm be. gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna go see it. Just because Fred doesn't like it doesn't mean it's not gonna be a good movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. One man's opinion isn't Mega Mountain. Yeah. <laughs> isn't Mega Mountain? One man's opinion isn't Mega Mountain. But one man's prediction could lead to a major death. Stop it. <laughs> good. <laughs> you make me feel really bad for the rest of my life. You won't. You'll, you'll, you'll get over. Christopher, I mean, Ian McKellen's going to live longer than me. I'm going to die and feel bad that Christopher, Ian McKellen might die after I'm dead. You just blew my mind. What, <laughs> <laughs> what all just happened? You were dying? You weren't dying, then you were that dying. some and- Inception shit going on right there. <laughs> we're dying inside of deaths. <laughs> so, all right. We'll see what happens with it. It might be funny. Him I just think that's interesting casting. It like, really is. I wonder if they're going to make him nerdy, though. I, I think, hope not. I don't think they should. I think it's funnier if they don't. You think it's like... It's like... They're just these, like, loser women, and it's just a hot guy working there with them. Like, yeah. Like, Thor's just there. He's just making them coffee. I think Drinking that's his just, coffee and smashing on the what ground and asking for another... What funnier is if none of them are interested in him, Yeah, he's super interested in them. Yeah, I could... He's just, like, he he's just like, hey, what's up? He's like, not interested. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? He's just there to answer phones without a shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to come in, all you see is a... He's like, oh, I just, thought, naked. I just thought I'd wash down the Ecto-1. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> they just walk in, and they're like, hey, doing a good job. And they just like completely <laughs> go up just to the office. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. And then Bill Murray shows up and he's like, hey, what's up? What's <laughs> up, <Top> sexy? <laughs> uh, so, I, did they even announce when this movie's coming out? I don't I think they have. Date, yeah. This is making Ex- me... It says expect it July 22nd, 2016. Just the more I hear about, about the more I hear about this, the more interested I keep getting. So, let's move on to our request topic. Request topic! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> There's the song. It's the best we can do. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Jay gave us this one. I wanted to talk about this one. It was, uh, it's been 22 years since the first Jurassic Park movie. And Jurassic World is coming out. Uh, it would be tomorrow in current time, but it would have been last Friday in the time you hear this. <laughs> <laughs> Got it? Got that? <laughs> so, uh, 
He wanted us to kind of talk about uh, dinosaurs in the Jurassic Park franchise. Well, it's funny. I was actually talking about this last night uh, with a couple of people, and we were talking about the dinosaur craze that was the late 80s, early 90s. Mm-hmm. Because not only did you have Jurassic Park, but you also had Land Before Time. And you had... And all of its other incarnations. And, uh, and then you had the uh, show <laughs> Dinosaurs. Uh, yeah, which I, I forgot how that show actually ended. I I don't remember. Eliza that. reminded me. It's like they're all sitting around the TV watching the news, and they're saying that like an asteroid is coming towards Earth, and then it just ends. <laughs> 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 ah, perfect. <laughs> It's like even the people that wrote this show, they're like, it's like just fucking kill them all. <laughs> it's like this is like a kid's show. It's like really like funny and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, they're all dead now. <laughs> it's like lost. They're all dead. Who's Sorry, that? spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> Your friends are dead. <laughs> Your mom's dead. Your dad's dead. Fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's dinosaurs <laughs> everywhere. I mean... Even on like the even opening, Godzilla was a dinosaur. Even like the <laughs> opening to Pee Wee's Playhouse had dinosaurs in it, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beast well, yeah, you had that fucking pterodactyl to talk to him. Oh yeah, Terry. He was always like morning, Pee Wee. Terry, which was a <laughs> very creative name for the pterodactyl. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I had a cat that I named Stripes, so fuck me. <laughs> well, you didn't call Every, it cat. <laughs> everything in that house had alliteration. Cowboy Curtis. Yeah. Come on. What about he, Jambi? The genie. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jambi! <laughs> All alliteration. <laughs> I, really, I really want to head the box to tell me things. Just sit around and chill. Why would you not? <laughs> you know how cool that would be? I, I just... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> now I'm thinking about it. <laughs> that wouldn't be cool at all. You have your friends you have any to... private time. I don't know. You can close the door. He opens it on his own. You have locks. Well, he's got magical powers. Fuck yeah. Funny. How many times did Pee Wee get in trouble and that box is just like... <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't put it in the same room as your bedroom. <laughs> yeah, you do. You put it at the head of your bed like a painting on the wall. <laughs> Keep an eye on it. <laughs> so you don't get out of hand. Yeah. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> <laughs> But but I remember <laughs> I remember when Jurassic Park came out, it was yeah. everywhere. That was the greatest movie of all time. Stop it. Still is. Stop. Stop! <laughs> it's a good movie. Of all time. And then they kept <laughs> making them and they got progressively well, worse. I said and Jurassic worse. Park was not the other ones after. Yeah. That. Like like I've told several people just watch the first one. I mean if you really want more Jurassic Park. I you know maybe watch the Lost World. After that, it's okay, it's okay like, for what it was supposed to be. Yeah, I'll admit I, haven't, I don't think I've watched the third one. It's it's a lot better than it's I way better than the second. Have you want to borrow it? I think I, I, think I, <laughs> I, think I, I watched the second one. And I'm just like I'm done with this. <laughs> Dinosaurs aren't cool anymore. But after you see somebody do uh, somebody's daughter do gymnastic moves and kick one out of a window, you're like kind of done now. Yeah. 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 The ever highly trained raptor. <laughs> it's like he, out of the corner of his eye, he doesn't see this thing swinging around. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I already bars, man. shared my uh, Jurassic Park story on the the show before, but in case anybody missed that episode, when I saw Go it back in the theater, to it. when I saw it in the theater, <laughs> I missed the part that everybody still talks about. And that's the part where Wayne Knight gets that dinosaur and spits in his face. You yeah. missed that? I missed that part. I had to go to the go to the bathroom. Oh, uh, you damn I was like small nine years kid! Old or something. What? You haven't heard this story before? You I were here. I don't think I heard this. I don't remember it. <laughs> you yeah. look on your phone. Look it up. Listen to yeah, it. Yeah, I got, I I got up and went to the bathroom. And <laughs> Real came back and my friend right was just like, "Oh man, this dinosaur like spit in his face and he died. It was awesome." I was like, "What the? So you are <laughs> serious? Did you miss the whole part where he like he slipped on the rocks and they put yes. that cartoony yeah. whoop?" In there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> didn't know that. Ex- that even, even when I was a kid, I, I was like, "Why did they do that?" Like everything's been so Knight. real. They had paid for and, like, the uh, Hanna Barbera sound effects yeah, machine. Yeah, it just and, made uh, no sense. Like, <laughs> like we better use it. I think like Push they, the button. No, I think they were filming and like Spielberg went to sit down and actually sat on the controls and that one went off and he's <laughs> like, eh, well, "It works. Just do it. Whatever." It's Wayne Knight, they'll believe it. Yeah, it's just Wayne Knight. Like, it's Wayne Knight, and I made E.T., so fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? 
I'm allowed to fuck up once in a while. Um, yeah, that's the part that I missed. But I did see the part where the lawyer got eaten on the toilet. Yeah. Good. That's a classic moment in history. The uh, the best dad joke ever. <laughs> <laughs> what, he's pretending to get electrocuted on the fence? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a perfect time to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you do what it does. <laughs> 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 oh shit but one thing about the Jurassic Park like when it came out I don't remember in the trailers them showing the dinosaurs going crazy and doing all that kind of shit you kind of was just kind of mystery about it but the trailers for Jurassic World it's kind of like you're seeing it's like oh there's Chris, Chris Pratt shooting at dinosaurs the movie that's what well, it looks like I no. think I think it's because with the first one <laughs> they knew you were going there to see like all the shit like go bad so it was like, you, but they didn't show it. In the no, that, yeah, but that's why they didn't show it. To you. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Like they didn't show it in any of the trailers because they know that's what you wanted to see. So mm-hmm. if they showed it to you, you just be like, oh, and whatever. But now that everybody knows, like it's a Jurassic Park World whatever movie, mm-hmm. they're just like, well, shit's you know, gonna go bad. shit's going to go wrong. Yeah. So so just show it to you right off the yeah. bat. Not not all of it. Just well, they showed parts. a lot of the. Show a lot. They showed a lot of the uninteresting parts. You know, it's like pterodactyls attack people. Who gives a shit about pterodactyls? Oh, the one that grabs the woman and like throws her out in the and water. Then, yeah, who gives a shit about pterodactyls? The one that gets eaten by the uh, <laughs> worst dinosaurs ever. <laughs> worst dinosaur worst ever. dinosaurs. Ever. Worst dinosaur ever. Yeah, now it's like uh, Chris Pratt's Turok, and he's leading a pack of raptors <laughs> to fight other dinosaurs. Turok Star Lord Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> is he hunting Star Lord? Or is he a Star Lord named he's, Turok? He's Star Lord. Star Lord. <laughs> he's a Star Lord named he's Turok Star-Lord. hunting dinosaurs. Star Lord. Star Lord. <laughs> it took my Star Lord. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, <laughs> Jurassic Park was everywhere. I mean, I, like, I felt like every single restaurant had an agreement with them. Oh, wow. Because there like, Steven, they were Jurassic Park glasses. Steven Spielberg does that with toys. everything that he thinks is going to be great. Look at the fucking E.T. I mean, fuck, the movie itself even, like, showed off its merchandise that it was going to it be did. putting in stores. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. There's <laughs> that whole part where, like, John's walking, like, Hammond's walking through the gift shop. It's just like... I have that one and that yeah. one and yeah. that one. I want that lunchbox. You can buy box. the fucking cars they drive in the movie. They have one specifically made to look like those. Like, you know they have them custom made. You can just go, man, I want this. The thing that I'll always remember. I wouldn't want that. <laughs> You'd have, like, the everybody would know it's you when you're driving around. Like, you couldn't get away with doing anything. How much crimes are you committing like, right now? No, if you do somewhere, you drive like an asshole. I mean, it's like, yeah. oh. It's the Jurassic Park car guy. <laughs> hey, dickhead. <laughs> well, you're running away from some velociraptor. Like earlier in the uh, parking lot of Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> best I image ever. S- stained my eyes forever. But I'll always remember the, it felt like hundreds of different Jurassic Park games that came out. I remember the one like on the every Genesis. System. That's the one I remember the most. And I just constantly get ripped apart by those fucking rafters. It would piss me off. You know, until I played it at your house, I thought that the Jurassic Park game on the Super Nintendo was the exact same one as the one on the Genesis. Unfortunately and boy, not. was I pissed off when we played <laughs> Unfortunately it. Unfortunately not. Oh, it was terrible. It was like Fester's Quest in Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a pretty good simile. Yeah. Because if you go inside any of the buildings, then it's in a first-person view where you can't tell where the fuck you're going. Yeah. And you go out, and it's above, and it's like you have only, you can only shoot so many times. Mm-hmm. And you're collecting eggs. Yeah, you're just going around picking up eggs. Which makes no sense to me. They didn't do that in the movies. <laughs> they didn't try to collect the eggs for any real weird reason. Yeah. Wait, and I did. So, but did you... Did you hear about the, uh, there is a theme park that wants to actually make a Jurassic Park? I've been hearing about this for years, though. Well, there's like, I guess, like, now they're seriously wanting to do it. And I'm like, well, maybe you should wait to see how the movie takes off. What does that entail, exactly, though? Well, see, that's what I don't understand, because... I just have things dressed up like dinosaurs, just trying to make real dinosaurs. I don't want real dinosaurs made. See, that's what I'm kind of worried about, because going into this, like, when... This topic, when when I read about this, mm-hmm. I also, there was an article next to it about how the scientists found 
actual soft tissue inside of dinosaur bones and at least seven gallons worth of blood that's good, like, for them to get codes out of. So I'm like, so wait, did these, does these scientists find this? And then some theme park guy's like, let's make fucking dinosaurs. <laughs> I swear to God. What could go wrong? <laughs> It can't, it's like a zoo, right? Just put them in some cages. <laughs> if, if I wake up and there's a goddamn triceratops running down the street, you just wake up. There's like this T-Rex eyeball like in your window. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I, ah I, shit. I don't want this to happen. <laughs> Reptar, is that you? <laughs> you <Yeah, yeah>, Reptar. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> so I'd rather Reptar though. He's a good guy. He's like Godzilla, but for kids. Yeah. <laughs> Is that Godzuki? <laughs> Godzilla for kids that's good, not son of Godzilla. Ugh. Let's not talk about that. Let's pop it in real quick. I don't have enough, I don't have enough time to talk about how pissed off that movie makes me. Let's pop it in. No. I bring my laptop over here. Don't. I just have it because I wanted to collect them all. <laughs> I'm gonna collect I watched them all. that once. Catch them all. I've got to catch them all. <laughs> <laughs> them all. I'm Sean Connor. <laughs> and this is my Godzilla collection. <laughs> Uh, painstakingly page collected page. over the years. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. I didn't just buy these all on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Many a yard sales and flea markets. <laughs> Scouring through boxes. <laughs> God damn it. So, and we'll go into our discussion topic to wrap this up. I want to talk about how you fix Sega. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Because, well, this was an article we didn't get to earlier, but Sega is, they're, they're coming, they announced that they're doing a Sonic Boom 2 Fire and Ice, essentially. They're not even making, it's not like it's a sequel. It's, I don't even think it's... I'm just going to call it a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> just call it whatever. But it's going to be on the DS, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 3 yes. It's going to be on the Sega Nomad. Yep. <laughs> So if you got one, dust it off. You got some new games coming. <laughs> I might go buy one just for this. And actually, from the previews, it actually didn't look bad. It looked a little bit like the Sonic Rush games that were on the DS. Oh, okay. Yeah, those were pretty uh, nice. It, is, it does appear that so, uh, it's not going to be like like a 3D platformer. It's going to be 2D with 3D elements, which yeah, is smart. Because they totally fucked up with Sonic Boom. Oh, it's awful. If you guys want to see like some of the funniest like Let's Play videos, go on Game Grumps and watch when they were playing Sonic Boom. It's fucking great because they have like their guy that edits all their episodes. There's like the beginning of one episode. He's they're there in like their studio, and he's like he's editing through the episode like frame by frame. He's like, I want to show you guys this. He's like, this is so weird. I've never seen this before. There, there's like, he's going through a cutscene. Sonic's like running after Dr. Eggman. Then out of nowhere, Knuckles and whatever her fucking name is. Amy. Uh, Amy. They just drop in from the sky <laughs> and land below the track and then pop back up in the next frame. And they're running and then it, the scene transitions to a behind shot. Sonic is now in front of Eggman, and then he whips back behind him in the next frame. It was just—it was a fucking mess. There were like, sh <laughs> there were like textures that dropped out, shadows that like disappeared and went back back in. It up that bad. Who's got time to finish a game these days? Like, they went out television. of their way to screw that up. But the funny thing is, like, when you watch it in real time, if you didn't know that that was going on, you wouldn't really pick it up as much. But I guess just because Barry's been doing it for so long, he looks for these things. Mm -hmm. What else are you going to do? But it was just like, it was so funny. And if you play as Knuckles in this game... You can just jump forever. Yeah, there's a glitch where, like, you jump, hit the pause button, goes to the menu, unpause it, jump again, go back to the menu, unpause it, jump again. You can just go across the entire map. Not once getting a well, key that's, or anything. That's what echidnas are like in real life. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just gliding around. Yeah. The sky through their domain. Yeah. Never seen one in the zoo? There's one now. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Son of a bitch go. Look at that. Motherfucker. God damn it. Think he's better than me? He's better than me. <laughs> Let's see you jump like that. <laughs> Who needs superpowers? <laughs> You're a echidna. <laughs> okay, so... 
I recognize all the characters except for Sticks. Who's Sticks? Who the fuck is that? Is Sticks the alligator? No. 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 Which one's that? What did he look like? I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know. They were just like, oh, your favorite Sonic characters. Knuckles, Tails, uh, Amy Rose, <laughs> and, like, and we're done. And Sticks. And I'm like, who Sticks? Wait, is, Stick, is Sticks the one that's like a bunny? I think so. Yeah. I think he or she <laughs> was in Knuckles Chaotix. Okay. The hell is that? It was a game on the 32X that is extremely obscure and even more obscure to understand how to play it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it made Sonic, uh, made Sonic CT look, you know, like an easy algorithm. <laughs> I'm just glad they didn't put the, the big dumb cat in it. Oh, from Sonic Adventure? Yeah. Oh, fucking stupid ass cat. But like, it just got to the point where like, they just kept adding all these different characters to Sonic and I'm like, it's getting overwhelming now. Yeah, well, I mean, there was like, a crocodile guy at one mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Yeah, what was <laughs> that game? Was Zero and Shadow. What was the game where you can play with like three ki three of the people from the game and you just had to go oh, do uh, shit? Oh, Sonic... Uh, Sonic Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. That game had a bunch of people I had no clue. Like, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> See, the funny thing I think about like modern Sonic Rogue games... The, the way they... Yeah. Make, yeah. The way they make like modern Sonic games to me just looks like the Temple Run games on phones and shit like that nowadays, mm -hmm. but they're trying to pass them off as AAA titles. No, what they're doing is they're taking the idea of what Disney does is like, oh, let's make another character. People will love us again. Yeah. No. And then when they tried to do something different and make like Sonic the Lost World, where they tried to almost make it like Mario Galaxy, that people are like, oh, this is different. I don't like it. Yeah. It sucks. And it's like, well, <laughs> what do you want? I don't know. Like, the last good Sonic game I think I played Sonic was... Two. No. <laughs> Sonic 2, in my mind, is the best Sonic game of all of them. Uh, I think the last one I played that was decent was Sonic Generations, if I'm pronouncing that correct. The one you could play as uh, old Sonic and new Sonic. Yeah, I haven't yeah. played it, but... It was decent. The last decent one I played was Sonic Rush. Oh, yeah, well... Wasn't Sonic I don't 4 play okay, but it came in a bunch of like different... Well, yeah, chapters that yeah, no one wanted to had buy. To it, like five different. Parts. Sonic Four Episode One was good. Sonic yeah. Four Episode Two was terrible. <laughs> Thanks. I'm never gonna play it. Yeah, that. they just like, hey, all that stuff we did in the first one that worked out good. Scrap that. Fuck it. I think somebody was just like, oh shit, I lost the physic files. <laughs> Damn it. How does Sonic run again? Is it fast or medium slow? <laughs> <laughs> medium slow. <laughs> <laughs> My problem with with Sega is the fact that they don't use their properties. No, they don't. don't. They've got so many. Yeah. yeah. If you buy, uh, what is it, the uh, Sega Master Collection? Yeah. It's like sixty games. Mm -hmm. You're never going to see any of them again. Or if you buy any of those handheld Sega systems that are just like everything's preloaded, there's like a hundred and fifty games on those damn things. Mm -hmm. Most of them being Sega properties. Mm -hmm. And they're all just like, Sonic! <laughs> Do <laughs> Sonic games! This is all that matters! Let's make another Devil May Cry game with Shadow in it! <laughs> Stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> I can't tell you how annoyed I was when they introduced Shadow as a character. Fuck that. I'm so sick of that idea of like, oh, we gotta make a dark brooding character with guns. It's like, Stop let, it. Let's make a Goku Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like the fucking Crisis Core. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Damn, oh, let's make Vincent really fucking important. He didn't matter. You didn't even need him. <laughs> no, you didn't. You can completely avoid getting him. Yeah. Every other character in the game, you had to get. But he was a good character, though. Yeah. It was better than some of the ones you had. Yeah. 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 All you needed was fucking Tifa and anybody Kate else. Kate Tifa, Sith. Cloud, and Kate Sith. This is, good. This is a good group. I like using yeah. Yuffie. You would. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Whatever you want it to mean. Oh, wow. <laughs> However, it furls your curls. None, none of those characters <laughs> mattered except for their final, uh, their limit breaks. Anyway, Sonic, yeah. <laughs> Sega. <laughs> Back to the dead company and not the uh, alive company. I think one thing they should do to try and like help save them is maybe start getting a little bit more third party support and coming up with some. Probably even some new IPs. Get some new blood in there. Some people that might have worked with really other help. companies, like Billy Hatcher. 
That actually wasn't a bad game. That wasn't a bad game. <laughs> Didn't they make Shenmue? Yes. Yeah. Why don't they bring that back? Because everybody does want a Shenmue 3. They, they really do. But we're never going to get it because they're, they're like, too busy hey, making Sonic. They're like, hey, could you not put it on just Xbox this time? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, somebody started a Kickstarter to uh, for Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, I know. It's all that. Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah, why not? Fucking awesome games. Toe Jam and Earl was great. Why don't you make some more? Uh, you can make some more light gun shooter games like fucking uh, Time Crisis. Time Crisis, yeah. House of some, the Dead. I'm about to say House, House of the but they, Dead, but they they kind of did because House of the Dead Overkill was an excellent game actually. They right, released right. that a couple yeah, times. Yeah, but I mean now you got stronger systems. Like make an actual real HD one, not one that was like on GameCube software. It was on the uh, Wii, and then they released it for the uh, PC and PS3. And the PS3 version is HD. Yep. Okay. Well, but the reason I don't, I don't like that one is because it. You have to use a controller if you don't have one of the super light guns. Mm, yeah. It doesn't feel good. Or even at that, failing that, you're putting most of your stuff on Nintendo now. Why not just basically like, hey, do you want to just become partners? They really need and to have just... have your first I mean, party people from Nintendo help make your game. Twice now, Sonic has appeared in Smash Brothers. Yeah. Just let yourself yeah. kill off the rest of your pride. Go with Nintendo. They will get you back on your feet. Give you some money. What I love is like not only was he in Smash Brothers, but him and, and Mario, they were in the Olympics. Multiple times. <laughs> yeah. Summer and winter. Multiple mm-hmm. yeah. forgettable adventures. Oh my god, man. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> but yeah, I, I why not just do that? You know, you can still call yourself a Sega produced game or whatever, but like obviously Nintendo knows how to make a fucking good game. I've been playing more of their games than I have anything else that's come out lately. they're good. They're fun. Well, one series I don't understand why they haven't used at all in over 20 years, and that's Streets of Rage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could totally make another Streets of Rage. It would be horrible. I'm one telling you that f- right now. Streets of Rage was probably my favorite beat-em-up like, franchise. All of I think it's good. better than Final Fight. And that says a lot, because I, I, I really did like Final Fight 1. I've never played any of the other ones, but... I'll give Final Fight the award for the best uh, bass drum music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, oh my god, this music's awesome. I remember the first time I ever played Final Fight uh, wasn't actually in the arcade. It was at Kmart on a S on a yes. Uh, SNES kiosk. I played it on the exact same fucking. <laughs> I remember I was playing that, and then like, because I was waiting for my mom to get something. I was playing that, and then when I lost, because it didn't take long, I sat down and I was like reading the Game Pro about Earthworm Jim Two coming out. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, the great time to be alive!" <laughs> you know what I, I didn't know that I found interesting? Uh, there's a code in Earthworm Jim to replace his head with a like Donkey Kong looking head. Yeah. And as reprisal, uh, Rare puts Sonic shoes and Earthworm Jim's gun. Next to a barrel that says video game no hopers or something like that. Oh. In Donkey Kong Country 2. And now both Earthworm Jim right, and Sonic are dead. Yeah. And Donkey Kong is still riding strong. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> They're dead. They're, They're dead, dead, dude. I've seen their graves. <laughs> when was the last time you played an Earthworm Jim game? Mm. Three on the 64? Oh. Yeah, I had that. It's terrible. I yeah. bet you if they made one now, it'd be a third-person shooter. Probably. It'd be horrible. It would be Gears of War. It definitely would with be. With Worm Jim. <laughs> he'd, show, he'd come out, he's got fucking muscles on top of muscles, and he's just like, let's roll out, Autobots. <laughs> <laughs> you, you guys remember the uh, Earthworm Jim cartoon? I do not. Oh, it's throwaway. <laughs> Get it out of here. <laughs> it's disgusting. Get it out of here. <laughs> I mean, the Earthworm Jim's not Sega, but I mean... No. We're off topic. But yeah. the Earthworm Jim games were better on the Genesis than they were on the Super Nintendo. Yep. Yeah. The sound on the Super Nintendo, for some reason, was atrocious. Well, it wasn't good for those games. Yeah. yeah. Not that the Genesis, with its really heavily synth sound... Oh, yeah, everything perfect, on the Genesis but... is like, can we make everything sound like metal music? <laughs> <laughs> but just really bad metal like music. echoey metal music? Yeah. And then when you get a, day, a game like Doom on it, they fuck up the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> but and I also love how every now and then you'll you'll see this thing pop out of a rumor mill where they're like, Sega's creating a new console. I'm like, no, stop it. They're not. <laughs> well, they were, but they were selling it at Dollar Store with 100 games loaded into yeah. it. 
It's just like they're because they're gonna put themselves back in the console wars. I'm like, no, yeah, that would be stop. the dumbest business decision they would could ever make. And then it's like you dig into it, and they're like, yeah, the next console is gonna be called this and that. I'm like, no, that's what that was the code name for the software that they made up for the arcades yeah. <laughs> yeah. cabinets, not for a home console. Yeah, because Sega still one place that a lot of people don't realize that Sega's really active in is in slot machines. Yeah, there are Golden Axe slot machines. There's um, there's Sonic slot machines. There's other pr- franchises too. I think Knights has a slot machine. Yeah, Knights does. I've seen. Yeah, it's pretty interesting to see those. Bro. Alien Syndrome. <laughs> oh, there's another franchise that yeah. they have is, is Aliens. Yeah. Don't do anything with that. Well, they did. They did. But... Alien Isolation, which was kind of like a you either liked it or you hated it. Yeah kind of game but it was like even before that one like they they finally got a decent alien game out in the past 10 years because then you had colonial marines before that which was just broken beyond belief <laughs> you know what sega you want to make some money put on the <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> that, was, that was seriously distracting okay no, Jason just took his tummy out and he's rubbing it. <laughs> um, if you want to make camera in here. you want to make some good money, some quick cash, put out on like the virtual arcades, the Alien versus Predator arcade game. It's the only side-scrolling beat 'em up that hasn't gotten a home port yet. Do they own the rights to that? I thought so. Well, if they did, yeah, they need to. Well, it's either them or Daddy East, and Daddy East isn't around anymore. So true. <laughs> Maybe the rights to it just floating around yeah. out there somewhere. It's You're just like somebody like, snatched it up. Yeah, we're lost in the copyright office. It's just floating around, and it's like somebody remember me. <laughs> it's like, wait, do we own that? <laughs> yes, hey, like, Mom, <laughs> do we own the rights to that Predator Alien game? <laughs> Like, hold on, I'll phone your cousin. <laughs> they pick up a solo cup with a string in it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going wireless because, soon. Because apparently Sega's run by rednecks now. <laughs> Why not? How we make a new Sonic game? <laughs> we start off making it look like a Final Fantasy game, and then Sonic comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and then fuck all else. Sonic 06. We We're going to play that on the channel. What they need to do is Sonic. make another oh, decap attack. Oh. <laughs> what about Kid Chameleon? Well, Kid Chameleon, they just, after the first real game that they made, they were just like, okay, he's done. <laughs> that was like their real answer to like an actual like Mario type game. Oh, you, you mean other than Alex Kidd? Well, yeah, I mean, but not many people got into Alex Kidd. Well, because Alex Kidd's bosses were just rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> it's like, hey, you might win. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first time playing that, I was just hitting the fucking buttons. I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Hit the button. I won. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. Next, please. See, uh, they, they released a uh, Gang Ground. I played that, but I'm not sure either of you have played Gang Ground. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, have? I played the arcade. It's excellent. It's very good. Until you get to parts where it's like, you don't have the proper character, so you're fucked. <laughs> they need to do a uh, new version of, uh, oh, what the hell was the playing game that they were really known for? Uh, the one, the one that Hogan played in Suburban Commando. Oh, um, Afterburner. Afterburner. You need to make a new Afterburner. Oh, that's yeah, right. They yeah. actually make a reference to that in uh, Bayonetta. Yeah. They had Afterburner. They had uh, Hang On, the mo- the uh, motorcycle game. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had um, Thunderblade, the helicopter game. Yep. They, they were all decent at the time. Then they can make something out of those franchises. Was it? They own a. Uh, was it? 19... F- the fucking playing game. 1943? 43, yeah. That's they, Capcom. Capcom? Oh, yeah. fuck Capcom. Yeah. yeah, fuck Capcom. Yeah. Capcom and Konami are both fucking up bad, too. Yeah. yeah. Everybody is. Did you see the uh, one picture somebody posted of, like, Konami's five-step plan or something like that? <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't see this. Fuck Metal Gear. Fuck Hideo Kojima. Fuck Silent Hill. Fuck you. Fuck it. <laughs> nice. It's pretty spot on as to what they've been doing lately. 
It's the best time to be a gamer. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> but, but yeah, if Sega really wants to come back to the living, they need to go back to the past. Oh. Stop, stop trying to be like Doc Brown right now. <laughs> 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 That's uh, really what the <laughs> second team needs right now. Got Tim DeLorean. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> to go back in time and fix all the mistakes we made. Somebody's just going to hop on the Sonic's back. It's like, run backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. You're our last hope. <laughs> How horrible would that be if there was an actual Sonic? They genetically modified a fucking hedgehog. A fucking animal there with, could be somewhere. A fucking animal with one giant eyeball and two irises. <laughs> Yeah. They're really goggles, likes actually. chili cheese dogs. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw that thing in real life, you'd be like, ah! <laughs> Spoiler Stop! alert. They're, they're actually goggles. Yeah, right. <laughs> it would actually make sense because of how fast he goes. No. <laughs> His eyes are actually that big. <laughs> it would make as much sense as when Pikachu's wearing goggles in Smash Brothers. It's an outfit. Dress up your Pokemon. No. You don't do that. Yeah, you do. You don't need them. Dress up my Pokemon new dress up clues. <laughs> <laughs> there I go. Sega Pokemon dress up simulator. <laughs> yeah. 2015. Nintendo's not going to Doesn't do matter that. if you have the rights to it. <laughs> Spell it differently. Fuck them. You, you and Nintendo are friends now. Spell it P O K E Y a man. Pokemon. Pokemon. Make it. <laughs> Pika man. <laughs> Make it. <laughs> Make it. Poke him with a stick. Come on. Do it. Ruin do your French. Ruin your business. Do it. <laughs> See, this will be a soundbite of Shia LaBeouf just yelling, just do it. <laughs> just do it. you got to listen to this thing. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I will someday. Uh, so I guess we got to tell everybody where they can find us. Who wants to do it? Go ahead, you. Dude, I am about to shit all Come over on, myself. Come on, do it. Stop. I, <laughs> stop it. That's do where it. they can find do us? It. I'm about to shit all over myself? I mean, if that's where they want to look, I'm, I really I doubt there. I really doubt they'll find anything they want to see. If they do, more power well, to you. If that, like, that rate, then, I would like to remind everybody that you can find us on iTunes. You can get every episode downloaded straight to your phone. You don't have to do a damn thing. Like Will Bagan. He doesn't do damn thing. Don't do a damn thing. <laughs> get it right on my phone. <laughs> you can also Wake find up. us. It's right there. Yeah, yeah you can. If only you do it. It's the only way. <laughs> you can also find us on Blueberry.com. You can find us on Grindcast.Libsyn.com. You can also find it... <laughs> you can also find our recordings on my website at GrindedWord.com. I stream them there. We are also on the podcast source. That's the app that we are featured on. And you can also check us out on our YouTube channel, The Grinded Word. We're going to be getting some Let's Plays on there soon. I also... I want to remind everybody that we're running a contest this month. Contest! Yeah. Give them them deets. Yeah. <laughs> you can go shit now if you got it. <laughs> I really, I we're really almost do. Gonna end it. <laughs> go ahead. Go shit. Foot Rockers did not do well for me. Go ahead. You don't gotta wait. Go ahead. And go poop. But don't you don't gotta look at me like that. <laughs> Just go do it. Hey, it's a dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's a contest. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're having a contest this month. Uh, I have the rules posted on our Facebook page at facebook.com backslash grounded word. Uh, we're giving away a loot crate this month. So just uh, make sure you go there and check out those rules if you would like to win. And it ends on the 30th. So get that shit going. You get some kick ass shit this month. Free shit. Free shit. Gotta be free. 100%. I mail it to you too. I don't charge you for mail. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody else, they charge you for mail. Everybody else charge you for mail. You want a loot crate, you gotta pay them, then they mail it to you. I'm just gonna give it to you. Can't argue with that. No? You can't. Well, you can, but be wrong. And if it goes well, I wanna do this every month. So, it's up to you guys. If I don't give it away, I ain't doing it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> also wanna give out a, a shout out to uh, Comics Connection. Yeah! They had featured us on their uh, Facebook page and their website. Very good friends of mine, uh, Bill and Ned. They're the owners of the store over there. So make sure you stop on in, give those guys a shout, tell them uh, Grounded Word sent you. All right, guys, that's it for us this week. As always, thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.